time limit for this video will be 15 minutes. If I'm not done by 15 minutes, abrupt end. I do that occasionally. Not all the time, occasionally. And by the way, I love the name that I'm giving this blade. Just came up with it right now before I started the video. Seriously. I'm going to call this one the Woods Cleaver. Looks like a cleaver, doesn't it? Perhaps a butcher's knife. That's what I thought too when I first saw it online. About two months ago, I'm clicking around looking for some new blood for testing here in the project. I set an arbitrary price point for us, 100 bucks or less. What kind of heavy duty chopping, large survival knife, woods blade can I find? I hooked into this one, the Woods Cleaver, AKA the Condor Hudson Bay eight and a half inch. Let me tell you this guys, at this point, I pretty much love this knife. Look at my likability scale to prove it. More than I thought I would. And I know sometimes I've said that on tabletop, but it's always honest. I, I knew the knife would be good just by looking at it and we'll talk about some specifics here, but it was better than I thought. I, I took it up in the mountains in snowy conditions Incidentally, that video, which you may see if it looks good enough to overlay on this video, was filmed with an iPhone because my battery in my primary camera died. Yeah, it happens. And I'm not hiking all the way back. I just sucked it up, filmed a little bit with iPhone. But then I took it on the moto uh, deep in the desert and hacked away at some sage and some oak. Juniper. And the knife just did phenomenal. It is a woods cleaver, or in that case a desert cleaver. I, was, I still like large survival knives just because they, they minimize the work. All the things I've talked about, dig in my playlist, you'll see so many reviewed to this point. Just occasionally I'll add to that list because most of the ones I've reviewed over the last eight years are still being made, still highly recommended, still pretty much awesome. Let me throw this out too on the woods cleaver aka Condor Hudson Bay, 45 bucks. Dang, son, that, that's a good deal. 45 bucks for a capable woods cleaver? That's awesome value. We don't see that too often these days. More often we see a knife from a major manufacturer produced, heck, overseas or in the United States. It's gonna run 150 to 250. It depends, you know, I've reviewed a lot that have. Doesn't mean they're not awesome, but they're a lot more expensive than this one. It is made overseas, El Salvador. So you can deal with that. But it's the reason it's so cheap and it comes again from Condor. I'm gonna start off with a the steel, then we'll, then we'll blend into philosophy of use. This is 1075. I have some experience with it. I have a ton of experience with 1095. 5160, other spring steels, variations, again, look at all the vids I've done to this point, a lot. I'm still not a steels expert. I'm just a user. I just, I know what performs well out there and I just bring it to tabletop. If you want to, you know, get into the specifics of the steel, the composition, have at it. The internet works, obviously, because you're watching this video. But here's what I come away with after de dealing with this steel, and it's really not from testing. It's from this. I tried to drill a lanyard hole in the Hudson Bay knife. I dulled three bits in the span of three minutes. No lie. Brand new bits. And I came away going, dang, I can't believe how hard that steel is. So the temper on the steel is excellent. The steel hardness is excellent. And I just gave up. You can see I did not go all the way through. The lanyard hole is incomplete. I debated getting a 100% carbide bit <laughs> and finishing the job, but heck, a carbide bit in that width is gonna cost me, what, 40 bucks? I was like, ah, forget it. It's not that important. I try to put a lanyard on, on a large chopper for safety. I don't always run them, nor do I feel compelled to do it, but I usually do. The steel is hard, 1075. I'm pretty impressed with it. Did a ton of chopping with it. It chops great. Also, I did some tip prying tests on it. 
Now, it seemed like it would tweak a little bit, but it always returned to true because I was torquing it and I was not holding back. By the way, what, what do you think I would have said in the tabletop had I come here and it was still bent? Do you, do you think I would have lied about it or would it change the way I think about the blade maybe? Yeah, the latter part. That Welcome to the testing protocol. I mean, the knife does well. I mean, I will flush all my prejudices down the toilet and bring it to you and say this knife rocks. I didn't have any really distinct prejudices of this knife, but I really didn't think it'd do as well as it did either. So I'm telling you that, like I said at the outset, I'm pretty stoked on it. You can see there's no bends. Look at how thick the steel is. It's just about right. The weight, by the way, we might as well throw that out there. Weight, balance, and feel. 16 ounces for the blade alone. So it's substantial. For that amount of weight, I can carry a lot of different knives. We'll look at a few competitive options before I wrap it up here. Add five ounces for the leather sheath and you have a 21 ounce carry package. Again, that is substantial. I have this just sitting over here. It was in a bracketed review. Here's the Scrapyard Psycho 911. It's 23 ounces. Then that's in this Kydex uh, by Red Hill Sheath. Great sheath. And just by size comparison, this is a big knife. And it, look at my review on that. It's, I just raved about it. Now, this is one of those knives, by the way, that's pretty pricey. And it doesn't come with a sheath. Which I talked about in that review. Which is, I don't know, less value. But, I mean, how many of these can you buy for one of those? You know, what measurably is the difference in performance between these two? For the average person that goes out and do does average tasks, if you're Jeremiah Johnson and living up in the freaking wilderness forever, I'd probably go with a Psycho. <laughs> and that proven steel, right? But if you're not, then, dude, consider it. The Hudson Bay. Philosophy of use. Obviously a woods blade. A survival knife. Would I integrate it into a bug out kit to a, a kit of any kind? Uh, probably not on basis of weight. It's just too heavy. If it's a man portable system or if it's a bush pilot system where you have a light aircraft or a motorcycle where weight is critical, no, I wouldn't. But in certain situations, in certain systems, it would make some sense. And I would do it. Great chopper. By the way, we talked about the weight, but you you know why it chops so well, right? From previous reviews. If you say weight forward, yes, that is one reason. Another reason is it's so broad. So it has a lot of mass in the chop and a lot of momentum from my own experience. Broad blades chop very well. They do. They may not do other tasks well at all. They may suck at them. Food preparation, skinning tasks, Anything where you need to maneuver the blade to make a cut, a broad blade, just does not excel at that type of cutting. Every knife is a compromise. You just choose what's important to you. It's a great prying knife, too. It's, it's basically, as you can see, it's obviously full tang, a plank of steel. Tough steel. 1075. I talked about the hardness of it. Five millimeters thick, by the way, if I did not say that. Hammered finish. Kind of a crinkle finish, but it looks like a hand hammered lock finish to me. That's cool. I'm not like, oh, that's so good looking, but it's serviceable. Reduces drag when I was splitting with it, which by the way, it did well as could be expected. It's a great batani knife. Didn't break at all either. All, although I will say, like I always do, I didn't do it in sub zero conditions. The grind is mostly flat grind. So you come down to this portion here where it's convex. I'm not a super fan of convex grinds. I just think they're harder to sharpen. If you disagree, I hear you, but I won't change my opinion on it. In fact, if I use this blade more, I'll just wear it down and just put a, a conventional grind on it. It's just gonna be a lot easier for me to sharpen to a wicked edge and then resharpen. That being said, a convex edge is more durable. There's more material there and it will hold an edge longer. I get it. Let's do a paper test on it, by the way. What do you say? You know how I've told you in past reviews that guys will go, oh yeah, I built a log cabin with like my knife and after it, I like shaved. It was so sharp. You're right. This, 
this is a good representation of why I kind of lampoon that attitude. Because usually when you do hard work with a blade and don't touch it up, like this one, this is what you're going to get. Well, I better get going. I only have five minutes. So it's not super sharp and I haven't touched it up. I could. Right? Good steel, great blade shape, kind of a buoy shape, and i got to start cranking. That takes it to the handle. The handle's a little bit short. No hot spots. It's well-rounded, and it was slick. You can see it has wood scales on it, and I wrapped it with athletic tape for more traction. Okay, and with that, it's sticky, kind of gooey, but man, it locks my hand in, and it's all about capabilities. I really like the, the roundness of it. I just wish the handle extended out here for more real estate, and I wish it had a, a lanyard hole. You know, big surprise. Here's a quick look at the sheath. Probably sewn in El Salvador as well. Yep, it's marked right there. No drain holes. You could actually cut one in. Traditional pouch thief, uh, thief sheath. I like the brown color on it. It's riveted. Excellent stitching. It's actually a pretty good sheath. I don't have much, you know, to complain about it at this price point, and it fits pretty good too. It locks in. This is not a fighting knife, by the way. Notice I totally didn't say the T word. It's not. It's a woods blade. Competitive options. Uh, there's a lot, but you're going to be hard pressed to find one this cheaply. I should say this affordable. I'm going to start off with how about an SCRC6? Much more expensive. Has a wicked sheath on it. I love the sheath. You can see a size difference there. Great steel. Talking about 1095. Heavily proven here. Awesome. How about the old school Camillus Marine Combat Duracoated, wrapped in camo form. Oh, I think I sharpened this one. Oh, that's a great edge. This knife here will dominate this one for hacking. This one too. Weight forward, broad expanse of steel. A lot more mass. I have the old Eagle sheath for that Camillus, as we saw in 2008. Ooh, another cold steel. Recon. Be an interesting contest between these two for chopping. I'm talking between the recon and this one. This one would win. I can just tell you that. Haven't seen this one forever. I was going to send it off to Red Hill. That's what that yellow post it is, but I didn't have the money for a sheath. So I just held off on it. This is the old old school one. Not a bad sheath. It's lightweight, but it kind of sucks, you know. Becker, BK7. Which one do you think would chop? We're just talking chopping right now. Would chop be between these best, bestest, these two. This one. Yeah, the Woods Cleaver, Condor, Hudson Bay would shred it. Now, if we bring Mr. Trailmaster into the mix, na 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 na, in a bracketed review. Ooh, I think I'll take the Trailmaster. Now, notice it's not as broad, right? We don't have as much steel, but we have length, and that gives us longer moment arm ability to hack so i just have chopped a lot with trail masters and they chop so well wonderfully comfortable and pretty durable craton handle longer handle by the way easier to hold on to uh, as far as ultimate strength between these two steels it'd be an interesting test i suspect seeing what i've seen from this knife and seeing what i've seen from these cold steels this one would break before that one but i haven't i haven't proven it yeah, just a thought. And then I showed you this one. The Scrapyard Psycho. And I've done some other knives like that too. From major manufacturers that are kind of a value brand. Look how thick that one is, dude. That one will chop. Did chop very well. Excellent blade. Hmm, 14 minutes. I have one minute before I wrap it up. So there's a couple competitive options. I say for the money, the Woods Cleaver. Excellent. Now, some guys may get excited and say, well, it looks too much like a kitchen knife. looks too much like a butcher's knife. You know, it's just not cool enough for me. That's fine. There's a ton of options. But if you're looking for capability, a value knife that can get it done, building shelters, firecraft, maybe some animal preparation, I don't really think that's its strong suit, like I said. Check it out, man. Under 15 minutes.